shall pray. Amen. Father, send your word to me tonight, even your word of life, your word of strength, your word of renewal. Somebody tell God to tell, send his word to you. My word is coming tonight, and I give you glory for him. In Jesus' glorious name we are praying. Please get seated and give God a big hand as you do so. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you'd like to joyfully give a warm handshake to your neighbors, to your right and to your left, let's fellowship together tonight. Let's fellowship together. Let it be with a smile on your face. Glory to God forevermore. In Jesus' precious name. It is my year of breaking limits. Are you sure God heard you very well? <laughs> Say it very strongly. God will confirm his word in your life. The prophetic theme for this month is my star is rising. I know the star has risen to some extent, but it will rise more. Therefore, say it again tonight. Are you satisfied with the way it has risen so far? Do you want it to rise more? Say it with a higher tone, therefore. By daybreak, you will have a testimony to share. Yeah. Our teaching series, every Wednesday or midweek service, this being part three, is caption, engaging the breakthrough power of the word. The breakthrough power of the word. When your world is breaking down, engage the world for your breakthrough. World breakthrough is cure to human breakdown. When everything around you is breaking down, go for the world that guarantees your breakthrough. The business of Peter broke down, but at the word of the Lord, breakdown was turned into breakthrough. When the word meets with breakdown, the outcome is breakthrough. Nevertheless, at your word, I will cast the net, and as he did, great drought, he enclosed a great multitude of fishes to the extent that their net break, breakthrough. Breakthrough means net breaking, net breaking. Breakthrough means when you don't have enough room to contain the blessing. Breakthrough means creating more room for the blessing that God is pouring down upon you. From scarceness to abundance to sufficiency is what we call breakthrough. And God will confirm that in your life tonight. So all we're doing in our service this, this midweek or this month, in our midweek services this month, is to explore the power of the word. Among other things, we understand that the word of God sets free the captives. Wherever the word appears, Captivity is bound eh, by the word of God. And this should not be seen as something momentary, but continuous. Number one, God's word directs our path in the journey of life. God's word is the GPS of life. In our modern 
world of technology, there is a system called the GPS. You find it in many modern cars. And those who don't have it in their cars, they have it on telephone. That is, when you are going somewhere where addresses and location is very clear, you may not need to ask anybody the way. All you need is to program the GPS and it will keep telling you. To the extent that it can tell you where there is traffic so you can avoid it to gain speed in life. The journey of life is very intricate, complex, and complicated. Why? There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is destruction. Proverbs 16, 25, 14, 12. When you think something is right, you have missed it absolutely you may find out that it is at the end. When it is too late, you end up in lament. Oh, I wish I didn't choose this. Oh, I wish I didn't go that way. This is why the old adage says, not everything that glitters is gold. We live in a world of deception where people will deceive you and they know inside them they are deceiving you. When you go this way, uh, at the end of it, you turn this way. And when you have left, he said, I got him. I got him. <laughs> I'll be laughing at you. Wickedness everywhere. You have serpents and scorpions on your way. You have charm makers who wants to destroy you. That's why the subject of divine direction or guidance cannot be taken lightly. It's my prayer tonight that God will lead you. Please join me, say a loud amen. Why spend 10 years on a journey that can be completed in one year? Lack of guidance. Lack of direction, lack of divine leadings. Please note, according to Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 12, it is not in man to direct his path. Man is incompetent to direct his ways. Help me with that passage. It is not in man. We are incompetent system schooled and educated yet you find professors who end in destruction who end in frustration it is not education that guides it is God who guides Jeremiah 10 23 oh Lord I know that the way of man is not in himself it is not in man that is, man does not have the capacity to walk, to direct his steps. Put those scriptures together. There is a way that seems to be right unto man. Everything may seem to be all right. A good idea does not equal God's guidance. Feasibility studies is not enough to guide a man to succeed in business. All factors may look accurate, but if it is not God's guidance for your life, you miss it altogether. If therefore there is any prayer I need, this is why we must keep celebrating guidance. Also, I have discovered from scriptures that all great men are guided men. All great men were guided men. Number one prayer Moses prayed is, Lord, show me the way. You can't know the way and not succeed in life. Moses 
pray, Lord, show me the way. Tonight, God will begin to show you the way. I thought you'd make that amen bigger. And Moses knew the way of God. And as a result, he performed the act of God. Psalm 103, verse 7. Show me the way. What is prayer? And the answer was very straightforward. Because we do nothing except the Lord commands it. Except the Lord gives guidance. Except the Lord says go. Except the Lord says do this thing. From today, your energy will no longer be wasted. Yeah. Your resources will no longer be wasted. Yeah. Your time will no longer be wasted. Yeah. God who guides this ministry will guide you. Yeah. God who leads Bishop Oedepo will lead you. Yeah. His divine leadings. Very shortly, you will emerge at your place at the top. Yeah. Now, the way God guides us, the most authentic way by which he guides us is via his word. Via his word. Now, please listen to this. Agree, there are other ways by which we can be guided, including visions and revelations and dreams. But they are not as accurate as the word. Why? Because God's word has been tried seven times in fire. When you are utilizing something that is proven, you have no fear. God's word is the proven instrument. For guiding us that is when you are guided by the word your testimony will be like that of Isaac in one year God made them to prosper above all the Philistines before this year runs out you will look back and say father thank you for guiding me 105 Psalm 119 thy word is lamp, lamp unto my feet that produces light unto my path. Now, the origin of that verse of scripture is the way the Jews used lamp. We understand that they tie lamp to their feet. And so when they are going, it lightens the environment as they go. If you like, compare it with touch light. God's word is touch light. You hold it and everywhere is lightened. Misdirection is a function of darkness. That's why people don't make decisions. When there is darkness, you don't sign a check when there is darkness. You don't even take a step when there is darkness. Once it becomes dark, movement is stalled. But when light comes, confidently you are moving. God's word is light. Thy word is lamp to my feet, producing light onto my path. We are all designed to be in certain pathways. It takes light to locate your path, and it takes light to walk in your path, and it takes light to gain speed in your path. So the journey to fulfillment in life begins and continues and advances with light. And God's word is that light. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. In the beginning is the word, and the word of God. The word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, 
and without him was not anything made that was made. In him, that is in Jesus, was life. And the life was the light of men. And Jesus is that word, and the light shines in darkness, and darkness comprehended in all. That is, when you have the light, you cannot miss your path. You cannot miss your way. From today, you shall no longer miss your way. Amen. Say louder, amen. amen. Through the word of God, he gets committed to guiding us. Remember, in Psalm 32, verse 8, he said, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way that thou should go. I will guide you with my eye. How does he do that? He does this through the word. Through the word. Before you pray, oh God, show me how to go. Go for the word. Because the way God leads is in the word. What are we saying? The more loaded you are with the word, the clearer your journey in life becomes. Get loaded with the word. Just like you build up electricity to lighten the environment. This is why those who walk by the word are never misguided. They are never misled. Misguidance become paralyzed when you have the word inside you. Get loaded. Get loaded by the word. A church that is loaded by the word, the word is the perfect guide of life. What does that mean? Don't be lazy at the hearing and the reading and the study of the word. Generate enough light that will make it impossible for the devil to hide behind to misguide you. Many people hear too many strange things that is not parallel or that is not in line with God's word. So they end in confusion. Any voice that is contrary to the word of God is of the devil. Don't listen to it. From today, you will suffer no more misguidance. Number two, God's word brings healing and health. Healing and health. He sent his word, one word. And through that word, heal them. You need one word for healing, but you need much words for health. He sent his word and healed them. One word is enough to heal. Speak the word only. The word, one word. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, beginning. My son, attend to my words. Look at that, plural. Incline your ear to my sayings, plural. Let them, plural, not depart from your eyes. Keep them, plural, in the midst of your heart. And what will happen? For the words you hear shall be life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Health, health. You need healing, one word. You need health, much words. The more the word, the healthier you live. The more the word you receive, the healing much words will bring you into health and vitality and strength and renewal and reinvigoration. Why do you get sick or rather why do you get healed and get sick again? Simple. After you receive your healing, you didn't sustain it with words. You relapsed. 
you went away from the world. So sickness came back to you. But if you stay in the world, you are staying in health. The more the world in you, the healthier you become. The healthier you become. I'm telling you tonight how to stay completely off sickness. How to be far from sickness. Become powerful. Oh, from your life. One word we cut off the branches. Much words we uproot the source of it. You can therefore see that the promises of God is not meant for lazy people. No. You have to be diligent. If you must earn God's promises. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 11 and 12. God's promises are not meant for lazy people. And we desire that every one of you do shield the same diligence. Diligence to the full assurance of the hope unto the end. Diligence that ye be not lazy, not slothful, not sluggish, but followers of them who through diligence and patience inherit the promises. <laughs> In the course of the week, one lesson I learned is that faith means diligent. Faith means diligent. You cannot operate faith as a lazy man. Faith is meant for diligent, hard working. Faith is hard work. Faith does not watch. Faith always act. Be diligent in study of the word. Be diligent in reading the word. Be diligent in hearing the word. If thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God. Not just hear, but hearken. So get into study. You don't want to be misguided again, study the word. You don't want to fall into sickness again, study the word. Get loaded. What is inside you is what reflects outside you. What is inside you is what reflects outside you. You can bring your life to a point of auto where darkness cannot prevail over you, where sickness cannot have a place in your life again. Jeremiah 15, 16, he said, Thy word have I found. There must be a seeking to find. And I did eat them. You have to be eating the word of God. Eat the word. Swallow the word. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. And the joy of the Lord shall be your strength. Find the word. Secure your joy to secure your health. Nehemiah 4.10 The joy of the Lord is my strength. Nehemiah 8.10, please. 8.10. Proverbs 17.22 A merry heart dwelt good as medicine. God's word comes into you and once it comes, it gives you joy and that joy will release sound health to you. Somebody say amen. amen. So when you hear me say, I cannot be sick just making empty statement I'm speaking from the platform of what is inside me what is inside you can't go to boxing ring and be making noise if your energy if your muscle is not developed yet you develop it in the secret and come to the open of your boast stop your hand and say me from tonight I will no longer waste my time going in wrong direction I will no longer waste my resources investing in wrong things. I will no longer waste my resources. I will no longer waste my time sitting down with wrong things. Receive that grace tonight. In the precious name of Jesus. Without Jesus, you will keep going in the wrong direction. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, 
I am the way. If you don't want your destiny to end in ruins, locate Jesus, follow Jesus. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the light. I am the way. John 14, 6. I am the light. John 8, 12. Following Jesus is what secures destiny. You are here tonight. You have not given your life to him. You are not born again. You are not in relationship with God. To be born again, simply put, means to come into relationship with God. And you know you are not in relationship with God. You know it. You know you are distanced apart from God. Tonight, you want to say to Jesus, I want you in my life. I'm coming back to you. Have mercy on me. Save me. Give me new life. Somebody is here tonight. I know you are here. You want to pray that prayer. You are tired and frustrated. You want a turnaround. Jesus is ready to receive you. He will not condemn you, no matter who is condemning you. Tonight, give the church a chance to pray with you. You want to be born again? Stand to your faith. You want relationship with God? Stand to your faith. You don't want to be confused again? Stand to your faith. Anywhere you are, God bless you, young people, middle-aged people. God bless you, church. Let's give Jesus a big hand for these very sincere people, very wonderful people. They are making up their mind. They want relationship with God. Now, please listen to me. Up until I was 16 years old, or about 16 years old, I was very different. God bless you. If you are coming, quickly come. Church, will you appreciate God with me for all of these precious people who have made up their mind to surrender to Jesus and to have relationship with God? God bless you. Somebody is there. You are feeling condemned. Don't condemn yourself because God is not condemning you. Jesus is not condemning you. He says for you to come behind. God bless you. Clap your hand, church. Let's receive these wonderful people tonight. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm waiting for the last person here right now. If you are, don't remain seated when Jesus is calling you. Your creator is calling you. Jesus, please have mercy on me. Save me tonight. Forgive my sins. Give me new life. From now, I surrender to you and I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I believe in you and I confess you tonight as my Lord. Thank you for saving me. I'm now a child of God. Please write my name in the book of life and give me your power to follow you all the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Please open your eyes. It's a new day for you. Jesus will receive these souls into your kingdom now and forever in Jesus' name. Please turn this way. Go after the church official calling you, beckoning to you out there. Church, your big hand for Jesus for wonderful salvation of souls tonight. Amen. To God be the glory. Are you glad you came tonight? You know one of the things God wants to do to you, he will guide you away from danger. No one